This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and today I am going to show you how to rekey this quick set such that the new key works perfectly, but if anyone attempts to use the old key, it will become permanently trapped in the cylinder. This video was inspired by a comment left on video number 527 by Tom Collins. So Tom, thank you very much for the good idea. And before we actually get to the pinning, let's talk about the practical uses of this. This is something that you might want to consider doing if you've ever had to change the keys on your house or apartment, but had concerns about someone who had the old key still trying to enter your house. What this will do is give you proof positive that they made the attempt. So to do this, we're going to have to start by planning our pinning out. And we start that by measuring the new key and the old key. So let's make a little chart here. We have six pin chambers. So we're going to make six columns. And the first column will be the cuts for the old key. And let's measure them right now. Okay, the old key we're measuring on this, this uh, I guess, depth card are six, three, four, three, three, five. Okay, so if I remembered that right, six, three, four, three, three, five. Now let's take a look at the new key. One, three, four, three, one, three. Okay, so one, three, four, three, one, three. And that is our new key. Okay, from here, we need to determine exactly what we will do. Let's start out with our drivers. Then we're going to need some master wafers, and then we will need key pins. The easiest one here will be the key pins, and what we're going to do is select the lowest number from each column. So that will be one, three, four, three, one, three. Now for the driver pins, we're going to take every column where the old key has a deeper cut than the new key, that is a higher number than the new key, and we're going to put a T-pin there. So we'll put a T-pin here, here, and here. Then for these other chambers, what we're gonna do is just insert the security pin of our choice. So I'm gonna put a serrated, a spool and a serrated. Now we will need a few master wafers and what we're gonna do here is write the absolute difference between the old key and the new key numbers. So no negative or positive. So we have a five here, a two here and a two here and then no differences for those center pins. Now something very, very important to note if your new key does not have any cuts that are higher than the old key, it's not going to work. You need at least one, one cut that is higher than the old key. So if you have a quick set pinning kit, you can just get a number five master wafer. If you have a pinning kit that is that just tells you the size of the wafers, what you do to get the correct size is multiply this five, two, and two, you multiply that by 0 0.023. And that is the depth of each quick set cut. So right here, I'm gonna need 115 thousandths master wafer. Here we'll need 46 and the same here. Okay, so this is what we are going to be putting in the lock. So it just so happens by total coincidence that I have those exact pins sitting right here. So let's take this lock apart and start putting those pins in and then we can see exactly what will happen.
Okay, let's just dump all these old key pins out. We don't need any of them. And I suppose we don't really need the driver pins either. So let's dump all that. We will be reusing the springs though. Okay, a quick note about why this is going to work. Let me put the first key pin and master wafer in here. And then we'll insert what will be the new key. And you'll note with the new key, that master wafer is above the shear line. Now when that's above the shear line, that master wafer, let me get back here. That master wafer will ride over this construction key hole and prevent the T-pin from falling in. However, when you use the old key, you can see that master wafer is below the shear line. Then what happens when you turn the key is the narrow end of this T-pin will fall into the construction key hole and prevent the core from turning either direction. And that will actually trap the key in place. So let's put the rest of these key pins in here. I should also note that this setup will be incredibly pick resistant because in three of the chambers, one, five, and six, those are the places that we have the key pins, I'm sorry, the T pins, we're using the exact same arrangement that I showed in video number 527, pick proof your quick set for under a dollar. So in addition to those, which make this very, very pick resistant, we also have our three security pins there. So this will be a pretty darn hard lock to pick open unless you are very, very adept. Okay, so number six will be a T-pin with the narrow end facing toward the core. Number five will also be a T-pin, again with the narrow end facing toward the core. I have a serrated pin in slot four, and that's really arbitrary. You could just as easily put a standard pin in there. A spool in slot three. A serrated pin in slot two. And a T-pin with the narrow end facing toward the core in slot one. Okay, let's put all this back together. And one thing to be cautious of is that when you're putting this together, you don't allow any of the T-pins to drop into these construction keying holes. So a good way to do that would be to turn it so the edge without the T-pin or without the construction keying holes will be facing toward the Bible. Okay, that's it. The keying is done. Let's put a clip on the back of here and make sure this works as we expect it to. So this is our new key and this is our old key. The new key should work perfectly with absolutely no issues and it seems to do exactly that. But let's say the old ex-boyfriend comes along, tries to get into your house with this old key and what happens? It is trapped in there and when you get home, you will see that old Marty was trying to get in your front door. So that's it for today. This has been how to build a key trap out of your quick set. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.